my name is Kanalu Sprout. I'm the Maui Access Deer Program Coordinator, and uh, I work through the Maui Access Deer Working Group. Today we're flying aerial surveys for the deer population here on the island. The reason we do aerial surveys is you can get a better view and cover a lot larger of an area in a shorter amount of time. We can assess and find out how many deer there are on the island. So they're saying that they think there's between 4,000 and 60,000, but you need time to get a good idea of what, how large the population is and what the trend is, and also distribution. Where are they? Where are the hot spots? Uh, so that's what we're doing for our flights today. Access deer were actually first introduced to Hawaii as a gift to King Kamehameha V in the late 1800s. The state of Hawaii in 1959 introduced them to Maui. They brought nine deer over. They've become a problem because in Hawaii there's no natural predators other than humans, you know, for hunting purposes. For every four head of an Axis deer on your property, I can raise a cow. We do rotational grazing, but whatever regrowth I've had, the Axis deer have come in and basically harvest the grass that I would have for this cattle. Okay? So that's an economic loss for me. We have to learn how to manage this the best possible way for a long-term solution and something that would be sustainable and we can make it financial feasible for all parties concerned. The Access Air Working Group was formed about three years ago. The number of deer really started to affect the ranchers and the farmers and so different agencies like the DLNR and the county and the ranchers and the farmers and conservation agencies, they all got together and they started to create a plan on how to, how to manage the deer on the island. And then they were able to secure funding to be able to carry out that plan. Um, short term, we really want to get a handle, a better handle on how many there are and what their growth rates are. We actually started some aerial surveys about a month ago. We did a week's worth of aerial surveys and we flew transect lines that were spaced 600 meters apart. So we will try to do some mark capture, recapture analysis. We're also working with, with the ranches and, and some other individual groups to, to get numbers of animals that are removed every month. It's, it's not a simple question to answer. And actually in wildlife management, that's the hardest question to answer anywhere. MADHC's short-term goals are to help reduce the population of the Axis deer. Um, we're going to do that by corralling, trapping, um, managing and hunting these animals to the best of our ability. One of our major and most effective ones are corrals. We're able to set out a corral into a farmer's pasture or into a farmer's field. From there we humanely put down the deer within the corral so we're able to take out a majority of the herd. Um, our long-term goals are to help bring down the amount of deer to a manageable number. Um, that way there's a lot less impact to the community. It, it's a complete zero waste. Um, all of our meat goes to our hunters, families, and friends. The carcasses and entrails go to um, Hokunui LLC, which is a new ag park being formed to help create a new, new compost for their fields. Uh, our hides are actually going off to a leather maker and tanner, and our horns are actually going to a jeweler in Kihei who makes all types of jewelry out of it. I think the major challenge for venison industry is it's never been done before here in Hawaii. Our deer are small, skittish, and really, really smart. <laughs> so to actually trap them and harvest them and make it a sustainable supply is gonna present a lot of challenges. Maui's Axis deer are the most natural, disease-free, lean, technically they're fat-free, and it's actually one of the best tasting venisons in all, of, uh, in all the nation. And the elk, we run probably about 135, 140 head for the last 28 years. Elk brings money for us. Customers come, buy the cuts, the burgers, they, ha they can consume it as our elk burgers. So we want to do something like that, but how to put this plan into effect? How do we manage this deer? For us with the elk here on, on, on Olupalaku ranches, we have to notify the USDA, inspector, veterinarian. They would come from Honolulu. We take them up to our elk facility. They look at the elk visually from a catwalk looking down. For them, the signs are healthy. They have, there seem to be no ailments and so forth. 
and we go ahead and harvest it. But we have to use a 22 caliber and it must be a headshot. We load it up on our truck, we take it to the slaughterhouse. A state veterinarian comes up also and he checks the brain. We take it out on a Tuesday, on a Friday we pick it up. Now, let's compare it with the Axis deer. It will follow the same protocol. I don't have a facility like I have for the elk where they can run into this shed and we do it very low stress handling. These Axis deer are flighty. Do we hunt it at night, which you can blind them with the light and get on it? That's a possibility. Do we make huge corrals and gates and we can take them out? I don't know that yet. The venison industry on Maui is an emerging industry. There's really only one person doing USDA inspected hunts, and that's on Molokai. So the, the feeling is, is that if they are going to be commercially viable, it would be moving from a field harvest model to a ranching model. And there's a lot of um, costs involved with that, including fencing. So the positive side of this is the fact that a commercial venison industry here on Maui could be a very viable part of an overall management plan of this population. And it's gonna work best through collaborative efforts. By harvesting these animals and helping out the farmers in agriculture, we're preventing their crop damages and preventing car accidents. And there's just so many things that these animals do that just create havoc for everybody. The Axis deer is a liability, but it's also an asset, right? And uh, saying that, you know, how do you best manage that for the best management practices? Our long-term goals are to effectively manage the population on the island. And so that probably means to reduce the number that are there and then manage that number that we get to um, in a way that's, that's sustainable, that diminishes their effects on, on the different businesses and ranches and, and farmers and just on the people on the island.